You're about to listen to The Castle of Past and Insomnia. I remember when, a couple of months ago, you said you wanted nothing to do with your father. And suddenly here we are, in an inherited castle that used to belong to him. Lore said to Hilario, with an inch of irony, but fascinated by the view through the car's window. They arrived at the massive structure that Hilario and away from around a decade ago. Again, we're not staying for too long. Hilario stated, keeping his eyes closed in hopes of rescuing a bit of the sleep he knew he would not get that night. A lone night it would be. He knew that it was a must for him to stay awake and watch over Lore. His hands wouldn't stop shaking with the mere thought of reliving what he experienced in that place. I just need to get done a couple of formalities in order to get rid of this. Hilario held his breath then, eyes sealed still. He knew nothing had changed in that place. He felt it. What was the issue between you and your father, may I ask again? Lore just couldn't let it go. He wanted to force me into being a second William. He kept his answer as simple as possible. Which, you can probably tell by the eccentricities he used to like. We were completely different. He said, Hilario mastered the skill of convincing himself that it was the simple truth. A little eccentricity is not as bad as you always paint it. His girlfriend commented in a very low tone of voice, just for the sake of saying it, not because she was trying to make any sort of point. Hilario remained silent. Lord did the same. She was still amazed and couldn't imagine what it was like to have such antique and important family line. Hilario came from a line of monarchs that had ruled Tremhia for the past five centuries. Until the monarchy saw its end, right before the previous century arrived, Hilario's grandfather and father kept the castle intact their entire life, taking care of every antiquity and every corner, every decoration and every leaf of each tree. Lore really tried to understand and come up with conclusions on why Hilario would want to tear down everything and literally forget where he came from. The car stopped and they both got out at the same time. One was excited but trying to hide it and the other was doing his best to avoid the feeling of boy fear and anxiety he felt by being at that place. Lore took a deep breath, swallowing the impression she felt for the beauty of the statues of angels that were side by side of the front gate. The tower higher than any other part of the castle and clearly the oldest or less taken care of out of everything else. The grass was the greenest she'd ever seen, the flowers the most beautiful she had ever encountered, and right beside the castle, a cliff that evidently had a courageous and wonderful sea below. Lore could listen to the water, the birds, and the overall nature that surrounded them. Looking around at every single detail she could find and admire, was the moment when she realized the many statues that were all over the place. All of them were either angels or weird humanoid animals, like the ancient gods and goddesses she's got to know in her history classes at college. That almost made her gasp. Hilario saw his girlfriend standing still. For a moment, she looked hypnotized and it made Hilario scared, just when he was about to beg for it not to start again. Not this soon and not to his girlfriend. Lore walked towards him. They took the luggage out, which wasn't much because they wouldn't stay there for long. 
and headed straight inside the castle. Lore made tea using the oven, which was more modern than what she expected. It was clear to see that it wasn't bought by Hilario's father. Perhaps a maiden considered that it was better to use an oven from this century. The kitchen utensils were possibly around 10 to 15 years old, though. She wondered if the recipe of the tea she found was as old as the castle, or as old as the kitchen utensils, and if it was true that it would help her with her overwhelming insomnia. Hilario watched Lore have so much fun using every single thing she could. Looking at every single decoration that was like four or five hundred years older than her. He knew how much she liked ancient history and felt bitter for restraining her from living that dream. Once he talked to Lore about the castle and how it was inherited to him after his dad's passing, she asked how many were the possibilities of them moving in adding that it was just a joke after Hilario said no. He knew he could have given her that, if only that castle and the things inside were normal. The view of the sun setting in the horizon, looking like it was slowly hiding under the sea, was so beautiful and felt majestic to the couple enjoying dinner at the balcony. The conversation they were having was all about the things Hilario needed to do the next day. The lawyer would be arriving in the morning, and the people who worked for Hilario's father would finish packing up and leaving the castle the next day. Needless to say how Lor felt about those workers, being left unemployed all of a sudden after the passing of their employer, they all already knew that there wasn't any hope of staying to work for his son, because he would not keep that castle. Lord took a deep breath, inhaling the breeze, and the fresh smell of the nature surrounding the castle. It was hauntingly beautiful that night, making Lore feel like she was within a fantasy book. The sound of the leaves, moving back and forth, the breeze was cold, as a consequence of the water below the cliff on the side of the castle. Dangerous was the first word in Laura's mind when she saw it. Amusing came afterwards when she thought she could feel the cold drops, gently touching her skin, drops of water that were coming with the wind. It was magical, to say the least. Lore thought she saw one of the statues moving. When she ran to Hilario and mentioned this, he exhaled and told her it was time to go to sleep. You're right. I should go try to sleep now. It might have been my tired mind messing up with me. She responded. I'm going with you. I feel exhausted after a long day doing. Nothing? She interrupted him and laughing softly, asked with sarcasm. Yeah, sure. Hilario said, smiling and shaking his head. I just hope that the tea I made earlier helps me sleep more tonight. The recipe said it was for those who suffer from insomnia. Lore said, relaxing her shoulders. If anything, I'll be right next to you. He hugged her. Let me know if I can help you fall asleep, huh? The double sense of what Hilario said was almost touchable. It made Lore laugh a bit harder, and then <laughs> she nodded to let him know that she'd keep that in mind. They both walked to the bedroom they would be sleeping in that night. It was chosen by Hilario after a small argument where he said to Lore that he knew why it was better to sleep in that specific bedroom instead of any other, but let her know no more than. It's the most protected room in the entire place. What did he mean by that? She couldn't tell. 
must have been something related to his past. Hilario kissed his girlfriend on the forehead as a way of saying good night. Surprisingly, Lore fell asleep faster than any other night lately. That tea recipe must have been seriously effective. But Hilario knew better. He knew he had to stay awake to make sure he'll be able to protect his beloved. If something remotely similar to what happened last time he was in this castle happens again, what he didn't think through was that the tea lore made the same that made her sleep, even when she was dealing with insomnia, would also make him sleep like a baby as he drank a cup himself. Soon, Hilario lost the fight against his own body. An estrident nose woke Lore. Her heart was beating fast, so she put her hand on her chest to try and calm it down. Getting up, she saw that Hilario was still deeply dreaming. How did he not wake up after such a nose? Lore jumped in her place. She wasn't brave enough to just go and check what was going on outside of the bedroom. It is the most protected room in the entire place. Hilario's words came to her mind. Protected from what? Lore was standing right beside the bed. She would not wake Hilario up just for a nose that could have easily been produced by some old stuff of the castle. Maybe something fell to the ground and the echo made the nose louder than it actually was. Lore was convinced that all she needed to do was walk to the door and make sure it was locked. Perhaps place something heavy in front of it to make sure it was double locked. Lore took one step. It all remained silent. Another step still quiet. With the third step came the fourth, the fifth, and so on, until she got close enough to the door. It wasn't locked. In fact, it wasn't closed at all. With a touch, the door slowly opened wide and left Lore in front of a darkness so deep that the only thing she could see was her nose. Barely. A sound so quiet, one that Lore could not perceive, announced something that was about to happen. The sound reached Lore. She didn't hear it, but she saw a soft light that seemed to be getting brighter and brighter. That light came with the quiet sound, which was also increasing its volume, until Lore could finally perceive it. sounded beautiful, like a harmony, a chorus of angels. Her eyes got blinded by that light, but it didn't bother her. All of the opposite. <laughs> she bursted out in <laughs> laughter, although there was nothing funny about what was happening. The chorus of angels were chanting. Tremhia, Tamdi Gag, O Serum, O Homan. Tremhia, Tamdi Gag, O Serum, O Homan. Ancient and dead language of old Tremhia, when that country was a nation, 
ruled by gods and semi-gods. It meant Tremia, the protector and sepulcher of the secrets of humanity. Lore knew that language. She's heard those words before, but never understood what they meant. As of that very moment, she didn't know what the angels were chanting. She knew nothing at all. Lore kept laughing, this time because the light surrounded her and made her float. Was she actually floating, or did she just lose her mind? Then, she saw the world ahead of her, like a painting, a moving painting. Giants, witches, Montecores, Centaurus, Cyclops, dragons, many creatures that she could identify, and many more that she couldn't. Cities made out of gold, cities under the earth, cities hidden on top of mountains and not accessible for human beings. End of technological cities, wipe out of history by gigantic waves, books never known and forbidden literature. She saw all those things and more, passing by so fast that her brain wanted to shut down. Lore's eyes turned completely golden and bright, like to shiny ingots of gold. Then, ancient objects appeared in front of her. The light showed her where those objects were, hidden within the castle, and as if she was watching the past through a TV screen, she could see Hilario's father arriving to the castle over and over again, each time with a different objective old. Then, another man doing the same. She had never seen that man before, but somehow she knew it was Hilario's grandfather. Then another man, Hilario's grand-grandfather. What is going on? Lore would have asked, but she was absorbed and would never return to who she was before she was shown what the castle held underneath, how every generation of this family was in charge of collecting and burying ancient artifacts, those that are proof and danger, forbidden information, the truth and secrets of the humanity. Hilario woke up next to her girlfriend, worried. He had a terrible nightmare. The relief he felt when he saw Lore sleeping promised Hilario another normal day and a good mood. She was turned, so he could only see her back. Caressing her hair, whispered her to wake up. The lawyer must be on his way to the castle already. He got up of the bed, and that's when he saw the door, wide opened, his chest tightened. He remembered that the door was closed, well closed, before they fell asleep. Hilario slowly walked around the bed to face Lore. She was pale, eyes wide opened and golden, like two ingots of gold. A big smile, other than being terrified of the appearance of his girlfriend, he felt devastated. It happened again. First, the castle took his mother, right in front of him and his father. When Hilario begged his father to help him save his mother, his father simply walked away. Now, the castle took the love of his life, and Hilario couldn't save her, because he slept. He slept when he knew he shouldn't have, not in the castle of past, and insomnia. <laughs>